Yes, you lovely people. If you're not already, make sure you give us a follow over on Spotify. And she chose the ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> that could be the worst <laughs> answer ever on any game show. Ice cream van. <laughs> Got ice cream van on the pitch. She chose the ice cream van. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everybody, this is the Fozcast. Today, I am joined as usual with my mate Tom. How are you, pal? Very good, mate. How's it going? Uh, really, really good. It's been a cold day at training today, but we got through it. Got Looking a bit wet? Got a bit wet. It's um, We've had some lovely warm weather and now it's gone a bit cold, but it's not the end of the world. But I'm looking forward to this podcast today. You? Yeah, big time. It's like my era growing up. We're all the same age, aren't we? So. Exactly. If you're watching on YouTube, you can probably see who it is on the uh, thumbnail, which I don't think is very good. Young Jamie has, <laughs> Young done, Jamie a, did that one. has done a brutal job on it. But <laughs> in the uh, in the studio today, we have got a Premier League legend. Yep. 100 he, Club. He's a member of the 100 Club. Yes, you are. Don't <laughs> shake your head. You are. I don't care what you say. Uh, he's a member of the Premier League 100 Club, scoring over 100 goals in the Premier League. Uh, over 200, pre- uh, 200 goals in total. 13 appearances for England, four goals, over £50 million in transfer fees. It is Darren Bent. Hi, guys, how you doing? Thanks for having me. Good. That's an intro, That's, that's a nice intro. I mean, I probably agree with you with the thumbnail, though. You agree? Yeah. Or, it's or, or, it's or rubbish, like HD or something. Well, exactly. Yeah. They're low-resolution like images. Twenty or something. Like. Jamie's better than this as well. Jamie does all the thumbnails. He does all bits and bobs like that, and he's normally bang on. But they are dead. That's about 20 years old, that picture. That one went far off 20 I years think old. You're gonna <laughs> have to, I think you're going to have to take the thumbnails back in-house, aren't you, mate? I will do, mate. I will do. I could have done a better job on that. Anyway, right. <laughs> Benty, before we get into the football and the punditry, the media work, all that kind of stuff, right? I want to start off talking about something that me and you share, yeah. right? And it is a a love, a big, massive love. Addiction? Mm. addiction. Is that the right yes. word? It is an addiction. It is an addiction, addiction, isn't it? Yeah. yeah? It is. um, and I'm talking about trainer collecting, sneaker collecting, like yeah. they might say in America, yeah? Um, you were the guy, actually, that really got me into it, okay? Like, really, really yeah. got me into it. Um, I remember when we were away with England and stuff, you used to show me bits and bobs. You always had, like, bad boy shoes on your feet and stuff yeah. like that. And I remember thinking, I just love that. I really want a bit of that. And that was what got me started. Yeah. And this was probably, what, 15-odd years ago? Yeah, probably a bit more than that, I'd say, probably. For, um, and you, I know for a fact, you probably have one of the best collections mm. in the UK. I'd say it was up there. I think yours would have been up there as well. I think it would have been quite similar. It would have been, yeah. Back in the day, it would have been, yeah. yeah. but, I mean, it's something now. I mean, I, I did take a bit, about two or three years off it for a little bit because yeah, yeah. like, my kids were getting born and I thought, you know what? And do you know what it was? I went up to my, lo- my loft at the time where I had converted yeah. and I had different sections. So I had like Deodora, Adidas, Puma, Nike, like oh, wow. whole sections. And I went into one of the boxes and you'll know this better than anyone. The soul was starting to turn yellow. Oh, no. Nah. Air bubbles were popping. No. Nah. So I kind of just said, like, why am I doing this? Like, I've got no time to go up there and air them out and what you've got to do. So I tended to then go, you know what? I made a few calls and I started to sell them. Yeah. How but many, then, though? How many are we talking we sold? I'd say about 600 pairs I reckon I sold. What? Yeah. How many did you have at this point? Well, I started up my own Instagram page. It was called uh, Mr. UK. Yeah. Mr. UK 10, it was called. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> people would DM me. And what I was doing is most days, like, not even auctioning them, but I was putting them up yeah. and people were just firing in DMs. And to a point, it was just, it was getting insane. Do you know what I mean? It was going over chat forums. And so I, I got to a point and then I went, you know what? Enough's enough. And I stopped. I mean, I was, every so often, I, so like now, back into it now. Ah, uh, yeah. Scanning all the, the, the websites. Mate, you have to do some research, don't you? Of course you, you do. Have to, you have to, honestly, to know what's coming out and when the drop dates are, yeah. the release dates, what's like rumoured to happen, all that kind of stuff. You've got to go on the websites like Sneaker News and all this kind of yeah. stuff, Hype Beast and stuff like that and find out what's dropping when as well. You've it's hard work, you've got to plotting your route as well uh, in terms of like, <laughs> right, if I don't go to him, if I don't get it from him, let me go to him as well just to be on the safe side. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. You know what it's like as well. Nine times out of ten, sometimes you end up with two, three pairs because yeah. you've you've gone, if I don't get it from him, I'll go to him. And then all three of them come through and you've got three of the same trainer. Yeah, but I guarantee you used to do what I would do. So when that happened though, you'd think, oh, I might I might sell a pair. If I, if I get all three, it's not in the world because I might sell a pair. You don't end up selling the pair, right? <laughs> no, you <laughs> end up You end up stacking them all and yeah. just like, I'll leave them. I'll just forget about them, right? Um, how many, pa- so at the peak, right? Yeah. How many pairs are we talking here? Probably about 2,500 pairs. <laughs> what? At the peak. Yeah. And do you, know, do you know what's funny though, which is scary, is that I used to have it in my loft, but now, because I've got that many, I've moved them to a storage unit. Yeah. Uh, so I'm probably not not far off of that, but I'm going up to that kind of high. Getting up there again. Seventeen hundreds, yeah. So what? So when you say about them like deteriorating and getting mm. a bit of yellow, so like I was watching a YouTube video the other day, and that's when they like wrap them yeah. in like um, <laughs> cellophane kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cellophane. Is, is that what you guys? 
do or yeah, you should can do, do yeah. or I, I, you can, but I tended to just go up there and air them out, and it sounds stupid, doesn't it? But just yeah. to get them out of the boxes. Spend a bit of time in there. Give them a bit Spend of love. A bit of time with them. <laughs> yeah, give it a love. And then, like, I even got a seat in there now, Supreme seat in there. So when I go in, I can sit down, take a bit of time, just go on my phone while I give them a bit of air and that. Is it fully organised? Fully organised, yeah. Like little sections, like you said, and all that kind yeah, of stuff. I mean, yeah, I said, when I was obviously at my pomp, it was crazy. Like, honestly, crazy. The sections were like Adidas and Diodora, Reebok. Because a lot of people were like, Diodora, but they don't understand. Nah, There's some big mate. Diodora shoes yeah, out there. Yeah, lovely. Massive ones. They? they used to be quality as quality. well, didn't the they? Hanan the Hanan Diodoras. Hanan, like yeah, Hanan ones. Beautiful yeah. stuff. Oh, so, mate, I love all this. It is an addiction. Um, what is your favourite pair out of the whole lot? So mine would be uh, Air Max 1, because that was my shoe. Yeah, yeah. Air Max 1 was the shoe for me. Uh, Atmos, elephant print. Yeah, nice. Yeah, nah, it's yeah. not the, the hardest shoe to just get clean, hold of. Just nice and clean, though. Exactly. Yeah. Love it. I must have bought it about five times. Really? Yeah. Because yeah, I, I like to wear mine. Yeah, I'm not yeah, one of yeah. these that buys them and just puts them in the cupboard. I always put them on my feet. I always usually buy two pairs. One that I rock and one that I just... There we go. Stock. stock. Love that. Yeah, of course. One to rock, one to stock. Yeah. Simples. That's what I used to do, to be fair. But I, I, we moved house like about... Um, it would have been about six or seven years ago, right? We moved house and I, I like I say, I had a decent collection, really decent. I had two or three pairs of most of what I what I wanted you to wanted, have. Yeah. Um, but because we we the house sale like went through so quickly, right? We had to we had to just move into like a rented accommodation kind of thing, and it was a much smaller house. I mean, much smaller house. And it, I got to a point where I was thinking, I can't bring all these trainers. No. I'm going to have nowhere to put them. <laughs> and I sold <laughs> honestly. I must have sold over half my collection easily. Yeah. Over half my collection. Um, I didn't have nowhere near two and a half hours pairs i must have sold a couple hundred couple 250 yeah. or something so like that right what's, have you got any uh pairs that you regret selling oh my yeah, god loads there'll be loads mate oh, what's, what's your top one there's more than loads right i had a pair so um i had the um uh nike dunks sbs um Ooh. pigeons new york pigeons um the staple pigeon ones basically which are like wow mate if you look on StockX now they're like 40 grand or something for a pair for a pair mm. this pair 40 grand they were they're, they're, they're selling on StockX right now I sold them for 1200 quid or something 1500 quid no. six years ago Honestly. five six years ago what about ago. you Darren oh so I had two that haunt me to this day so I had the undefeated Jordan 4s oh now if you look on StockX I think they're going for about 100,000 pounds easy that easy that, yeah. yeah and you know it's funny how because I, I managed I managed to find them I told the other pair I had but them pair I went on pre-season to Philadelphia yeah. uh, with Villa and I've become friendly with the the guys in this shop over there. I can't remember what the shop's called now because I think it kind of shut down. And I bought loads of pairs while I was on pre-season and shipped them back in a big box, about 15 <laughs> pairs. Anyway, we played a game against, I can't remember it was, and I got a text message saying, oh, I looked on their Instagram page and it was like, who's got a money burning a hole in their pocket? These are for sale. But they wouldn't reveal the image. Yeah. And then the next day revealed it undefeated straight away. I was, I'll take them, I'll take them, I'll take them. So I bought them for £8,000. At the time, eight eight thousand. That's a lot of money at the time to at drop time, a pair of trainers. But I, I need to have them. I ended up selling them in the end for I think for about thirty two. I think I sold them for. So yeah, but still. But and the still. other pair I had was a Paristonk. Oh mate, yeah. they just sold the other day. Yeah, they, Paristonk. Yeah. yeah, some proxy bought some for like hundred and whatever it was, yeah. hundred and something. And both of them were dead stock. Oh mate, yeah. yeah. In uh, UK ten. UK ten, mate. Prime isn't size that the best as well, size, isn't it? It was one of the best sizes. Nine or yeah. eight, nine, ten. Prime sizes, like oh my god. So I had them. I had another pair, but it didn't really bother me. Like, I used to buy a lot of my stuff. You know the shop Prime in yeah, Holland? Yeah. So I used to just sometimes just fly over there for a day, get my stuff and come yeah. back. Yeah. I had the Albert Hein. Yeah. Oh, Air mate. Max 1. The Air Maxes. Oh, my gosh. Send them as well. Sold them. Oh, they're the orange ones, aren't orange they? Ones, the yeah. Orange, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Mate. But you, you might know my friend Elsie, though. Yeah, Elsie. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. helped me source a lot of these shoes. Did he? Yeah. Yeah, loads of them. They yeah. were always his grail then, weren't they? Yeah. The Hines, I, I remember, must have yeah. found a pair, yeah. Oh, my days, mate. This is incredible. I could talk about this all day long. Well, yeah. you know, you two, you know you're a sneakerhead when. You come in and, and Darren goes, you're a, ni- you're a nine, aren't you, Ben? I yeah. remember. He remembers. Yeah, 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 he remembers. Yeah, yeah. I spoke to Benny for years and he still <laughs> remembers shoe size. Um, did you get any of the um, the Air Max ones patterns? The, uh, the new ones, the, the new Waves? Ones, yeah, I did, yeah. Beautiful. Nowhere near the old no, the, 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 the ones. Don't get me wrong. They are much better than the normals, though, aren't they? The yeah. normal Air Max ones. Any new release of Air Max, they're, they're normal. They're not cherry woods, though, are they? No, nah, they ain't cherry woods. So what got on your feet today, lads? Is this just general, everyday stuff? What what? I've got a pair of the old school Yeezys, Wave Runners. They'll do. They're comfy as you like these. I just got the ter- the Terrascapes, the uh, recycled Air Max 90s. To be fair though, mate, you needed something comfortable today, didn't you? You had to wear something comfy on your feet today. Tell <laughs> yeah. everybody what you did the other day. This morning? This, mo- this morning was it? What, playing 5-0? Yeah, oh, mate, yeah, did, what yeah. have you done? Before I came here. Really? So I, I did the, the breakfast show. Always going to play 5 aside, And it was the last like, five minutes of the game. Oh. Calf just go. 
Ping. Ping. And it's in bits now. In bits now. Mate, if it's in bits now, it's going to be double sore tomorrow. I know. What can I put on it that I can't remember? Maybe mate. a little bit of a tubi grip? Mate, you're, forget <laughs> it, mate. Don't worry about it. Just get it up. Get a bit of ice on it and yeah. chill out for a few days. That's I, going to be painful. I was supposed to play a charity game Sunday, so they might have to get knocked on the head. That they're going to be happy, are they? Oh, judging by the way you mate. walked in, mate. You've got oh. absolutely no chance. What are you, 38 now? Yeah. Mate, you've got no chance. You're going to be in bits for a while. Mate, right, okay, anyway, that's the sneaker talk done, all we right? We have just realised that we've got um, Darren to come over to Spotify just on the Strand. Yeah. And when we've realised we all live within about six miles of each yeah. other. Yeah, no, it's crazy. So we could have <laughs> just done it at our studio in Leamington Spa, yeah. which would have been really easy for Never everyone. Never mind, next time. Everyone involved. Um, anyway, right, let's uh, let's talk about the football stuff, yeah? Let's talk about football. Um, actually, before we do still talk about football, are you, so are you just a sneaker collector? You don't collect anything else? No, just sneakers. You haven't got, what, when I, I say this what I'm talking about is football shirts have you got any like real nice notable football shirts Do you know from, what I was, I was never big on collecting the really? shirts there, there were players that I played against that I was, I was desperate to get to the likes of Tierra and Reed yeah, yeah, yeah. I got his um, and m- maybe when we play against Spain and Brazil like I've got Sergio Ramos' shirt from nice. Spain and I think Lucio's from Brazil Yeah, but I wasn't really one of them that was some guys I know that are just mad for it, aren't they? Collecting Get as many as over. they can. Yeah. And I guess now you look at it, if we'd have done it back then, the amount of money that it goes oh, for now, mate. It's, it's, you, you would have never known that. But I was never really big on the old shirts thing. Yeah, you know? um, they, they are now like they're big business now. It's a bit like trainers have exploded, yeah. haven't they? To be fair, like the, the match worn shirts of players, like pff, worth an absolute mm, ton. They're worth a fortune. Like you said, players like that, Thierry Henry, where if you can prove that they're match worn and stuff like that, but you're a player, so they're going to be match worn. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. They are worth an exactly. absolute boatload, aren't they? Yeah. Um, can you just try and explain to people how it works when you want to try and get a player's shirt? How does it work? Well, I've, I've seen <laughs> I've seen quite a few ways it be done. So I've seen people get tapped up in the, in the Warm up, <laughs> no, you yeah, have not. Yeah, in the in the warm up. Oh so, nah, like, that's not on in my but I think that's too early. Yeah. You can't do it unless you know them. Yeah, yeah I don't think you can do, do you know that. If you're warming up in your half of the pitch, and yeah. then say something. Most stadiums, if the tunnel's not in the middle, they have to run across. Yeah, your, everyone. Don't they? Yeah, yeah. So you go, oh, shot after the game. Nah. So you could do that. I've seen it in the tunnel before the game. <laughs> oh, no. We're playing against each other, and probably the best one I've seen was when I was at Ipswich Town. We played Inter Milan in the back then it was called the UEFA Cup. Yeah, yeah. And the real Ronaldo, Brazilian Ronaldo, oh makes God. his comeback against wow. uh, against, against Ipswich. Ipswich in shut the up. Cup, right? Obviously, Titus Brown was tapping him up. Titus, and he's, oh, Ronaldo, like shirt, shirt, and he's like, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Ronaldo, obviously, the game finishes. He walks down the tunnel. We've just been beat four one. <laughs> Titus <laughs> forgets about the fans. To cut the fans, just sprints down the tunnel, <laughs> taps him. Arguably the greatest shirt to ever get. R nine Ronaldo in yeah. the Milan. Milan bad boy as well. That yeah. old school shirt. They are nine. Yeah. That got, back got then was incredible. By George Burley in the Did dressing room for not clapping the fans, for not you know I me mean, going over there and showing their support. But I get it. Ronaldo, he, honestly, we went that way. He just took off down the tunnel <laughs> to get Ronaldo. Was <laughs> that when you were playing in the UEFA Cup in the? Championship, yeah, we, we finished fifth the first season, that's right? Yeah, and then the second season we got relegated, relegated and that's after. when we played against Inter Milan. Yeah, I remember. It was I, I think you, I think I'm taking a, a, a absolute bollock in there. I am. I'm with you. I'm with, I'm with you. Hundred percent. Because that's pride of place now. Like, of it is. imagine how Nine. much shirts like that are worth nowadays. Oh, that's got to be worth D- Pirelli Five on figures, the front. Maybe? Pirelli. Oh, beautiful. The, the I don't know why they wore it that day. The um the black and yeah, yeah, I know yeah. What you mean, the yeah. grey. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. All right, come on. Let's actually get into some football talk <laughs> then, right? Yeah. So um, I said a minute ago, over fifty million pounds in transfer mm. fees, Benty. When you look back on your career, do you think, yeah, not bad that? Yeah, you do. I mean, there's always things you can look back and go, oh, I should have had more opportunities there. Well, that was a lot of money. But at the end of the day, I'm, I try and live with no regrets. Everyone yeah. has regrets, don't they, about certain things they could have done differently. But obviously, I achieved everything I wanted to achieve, which was play for my country, score a lot of goals in the Premier League. And I feel I managed to do that. Obviously, yeah. internationally, there was so many more things I wanted to achieve. Going to a major tournament would have been one. Scoring more goals for England. Getting more than 13 caps. I know it's still an honour. Yeah. But you almost feel like with the amount of goals I scored... I could have had maybe more 10, 15 more caps, you know what yeah, I mean? But yeah. unfortunately, it just wasn't written in the stars I think I've got down here, actually, that that one season where you scored 25 in all competitions, yeah. there was only Thierry Henry who scored more than you that season. You still didn't really get too much of a look in with England, did you? No, and, and fair, it happened twice because the first time was, which I think you're alluding to, was the 22... Um, and Theo Walcott went. Do you remember? Yeah, that Theo one? went yeah. instead. That yeah. one. And yeah. then, and the next time, and he was a kid as well. Wasn't he was a kid. He? Like I'd, 18, I'd, ne- I'd never he played yeah. in the Premier League. Yeah. So that was one. And then the twenty-five that you're talking about was when I got beat by Drogba and Rooney. But again, didn't even get a Mate. sniff. Why was that? Do you think? What is that? Is that a big club thing where they only want the players who are playing for the big boys? I don't know if it's so much that. But I, I, where I, were you at the time? Was that Villa? Was it? No, that no, was no, in no. Sunderland. Sunderland. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Sunderland. Yeah. 
I probably feel if it might have been to do with the managers, it might have been to do with the whole setup. Yeah. But I think if Gareth Southgate's in charge back then, yeah. things are a lot differently for a lot, for, lot for, for a lot of other players. <coughs> yeah, sure. Not just myself, but he would have been. He would have seen that. Okay, he's doing well for his club. I'm going to integrate him into the squad. But it was almost like Sven, Stephen McCann, not not so much Capello. It was almost like these are going to be my starters. Yeah. And even if they're fifty percent fit. They're still, they're, still, they're still going before you, so so you, I'd have had to wait till one of their legs fell off yeah. to get a real opportunity. Mate, that's just do you know what? That's it was like that, wasn't it? Yeah, it really was like that. I I even think a bit McLaren as well. Like, I think they were all kind of like that. As long as kind of the big boys pick themselves, yeah. it's as simple as that. Doesn't matter yeah. what kind of form they were in for club or for whatever, they would just pick themselves. As simple as that. So players on the fringe like you just. You'd get a go. You might come on for the yeah. last sort of 20 minutes, half an hour or stuff like that, but you never got a solid run in the team, did you? I, I can even remember a time where, do you remember we lost to Croatia? Yeah. Didn't qualify. Robbo, that was the one with Robinson where it bobbled over his foot. No, Scott Carson, that, that was Scott it? Carson, that one. The one, Scott Carson. Oh, Carson. I remember this yeah, bit. Yeah. It's um, thing he was manager, yeah. weren't he? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I can remember being on the bench at and warming up and he'd put a couple of subs on. I think he put Bex on a couple of others. And we're losing, but I thought, he's not going to put me on it. Or we, I think we were drawing or we were losing one of the two. And I remember thinking, there were some big hitters on the bench. I remember thinking, he's not going to put me on, is he? So I'm warming up. And then he just turns around, has a look and goes, oh, Owen Hargreaves, get warmed up, you're going on. So I go back to my seat. And I usually take my shin pads off when it's been the three substitutions. Yeah, yeah. But somebody just said to me, you know what, just, just leave them on. And then they scored right at the end, didn't they? He scored the, the whip. Yeah, yeah. It was and wet. Like, it was horrible, weren't horrible. it? Horrible. Yeah. And he, just, he turns around and goes, no, Ben, you're coming on. So even in that scenario, because he was up back to the wall, yeah. if he hadn't, he probably wouldn't have put me on in that game either. When we're losing, yeah, we need a goal. He's got less, almost like he's got nothing to lose now. Nothing so to just lose sort of now, like yeah. stick you on and that's it. It's, it does seem different these days though, doesn't it? Yeah. It does It does yeah, seem it differently. Different. But no, we were, it's not just seems, it is different. Yeah, we it? were chatting about it, like um, obviously researching your career and looking up, obviously we're the same age, so I kind of followed your career mm. anyway. But one thing I comment I made to Ben was like, you were just an absolute sure thing mm. for yeah. a goal, weren't uh, you? Like no. you sign you, it's like players, you look at like people like Jermaine Defoe, you're yeah, like, of you, you're going to get goals, yeah. Yeah. just no matter what. So, But me and Defoe were kind of in the same boat as well, because even for him, he's got a lot of goals, Jay. Yeah, he, yeah. he never really got trusted properly with England, did no, he? No, he didn't. No, he didn't. And also no. even with a, like a big club, yeah. like you think at times where they took risks on foreign players that yeah, had never played the Premier League but it sounded great like the, the stats in whatever league they played and looked good he had someone like Defoe who used to score goals for absolute fun didn't yeah, he but I never know. got the opportunity yeah it's true Jay you, you were very similar like yeah. you had a bit of everything like, not blowing smoke up your ass yeah. but you did you had a bit of everything but pace to burn you were one of those where you didn't really need much I kind of knew what, I knew what my weaknesses were and what strengths were Maybe. to play to your strengths but it was almost like it was it weren't enough and listen we, we were blessed with some fantastic centre forwards but you just look at the goals and you look at certainly the last, the the, the middle part of my career, you think, oh, I could have got more opportunity. I remember travelling pretty much all season and maybe getting on the pitch once. Really? Like when, grind, remember when Wembley it? wasn't Wembley, we were playing at all at Old Trafford. Yeah, I know. I felt like I was just up there all the time for just how to watch. How frustrating is that? Because you were both in the similar kind of boat, obviously you more so because you're a goalkeeper, but it's what's that feel like when you're travelling every time and you don't get a, you don't get a crack at it? It's difficult, it's difficult, but I mean, you, you look at the positives that like you're with England, you're one of the, the best players, it's elite, but... At some stage, you just think, yeah. just, get, just get, get me on the pitch a little bit. Let me show what I can do. Give me 10, 15 minutes at the end of a game. But when you're just constantly travelling, like, I know I could tell before I got to the squad whether I was going to get an opportunity. Really? Yeah, of cool, course. Why? Like what? What was it? Because even, it doesn't matter what kind of form I was in, I could have had five and five, ten yeah, and ten leading up to that international. All it took was Rooney to get two in that international before. That'll do. Or, or Owen to get a goal that weekend or Crouchy. And that would do. I knew they were going to get going into it in great form. They were always going to go. You know what, as well? You can always gauge a bit from like the, you know, when he, the, the England manager calls his squad and stuff like that and yeah. he names it and stuff. If he's sort of blowing smoke up somebody's ass a little bit, that, that means they've got a chance of starting a bit. So, but even back then, like I say, when you're scoring goals and stuff, you'd have liked the England managers to have gone, well, Bentley's on fire. Like, yeah. I'm going to have a real decision to make here. Never came. Never came. Never. Got his Not, mind was made up already. Exactly. And the, and the only time it changed for me was at the very end where they went to 2010 World Cup. Wasn't great. It was I think it was quite poor. Is that the one where they got beat? South Africa, that one. Yeah, it? where the Lampard goal Yeah, got that's beat. it. Yeah, up and down, yeah. He didn't take me. And I remember coming back for the first international the following season and Capello saying to me, I made a mistake. I should have taken you. Yeah. From now on, you're going to be my number nine. Yeah. And I went on a run of scoring in four consecutive games. Yeah. So I felt like I was part of the squad. 
But even that, I got injured. He got the sack, and it was never the same after that. Uh, you mentioned Capella there. Talk to me about Fabio Capella because I was in I was in the England squad with Fabio Capella, um, and it'd be interesting to know what you think of him because I've got my own personal yeah. opinion on it, and I'll happily tell you. Who's going to go first? <laughs> Who's going to go? I'll let Fozzie go first. Go on then, Foz. Um, no, uh, do you know what? Right, he was the first time. Like, I've, obviously, I've played for like coming from Sir Alex Ferguson at United and all that kind of stuff, where he was he was firm, he was strict, and mm. you did the did it properly and blah blah. But he would give you little bits of leeway, like he would let you kind of, do you know what I mean? When you go for food and stuff, you can eat what you want, like training. Like when he blew the whistle and it was time to train, you trained and you did it properly. But like Capello, mate, he just was over the top with absolutely everything. I remember one time, this one time, right? Madness. We're at Wembley, about to go out for the game, go out for the warm up, sorry. And Bex and I don't know, it was Rio maybe or something like that. We're in the change rooms doing like a bit of one touch or two touches to each other or something. In the corner, away from everybody else, just doing it. He walked in. Because you have to walk through like the different sections. He walked in, waited till somebody had looped it, picked the ball up, and just walked out. Right, and you've got big old Bex, yeah. big man. <laughs> you got big man Bex just standing there going, "What?" Like that, and everybody just sort of looked at him and went, "Oh God!" But it, that's what it was. But then I think that's that was starting to lose its respect like straight away. Yeah. As soon as he did it, everybody was just like, "That's just a dick move." Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And the food stuff, like he yeah. took he took all the good stuff all away. The in the food. All the condiments, ketchup, <laughs> oil, cheese, like, all that kind of stuff. Everyone was plain and boring. It was just like, oh, "What's so the point?" So if you're having like pasta, so we're talking like the elite of the elite here. Mm. So honestly. A bit of salt or a bit of oil no, on your that. dinner? Is that, gonna, that? Is that no. Gonna, no, what I was going to say, is that going to really make an impact when but you're away with England is, for a this week? This is what he was like. Come on, you give me yours. You give it, me honestly, yours. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much saying you, but I, I said I saw two versions because the first version was the one that Fozzie just said there about no condiments. I remember even if you wanted to go downstairs to get a snack, you couldn't wear shorts. Yeah, exactly. remember? no flip-flops either. No flip-flops. No you flip had to flops. wear a full tracksuit. And you thought, just like, calm down. <laughs> um, I, I get it with the whole no phones in the... In the Canteen, yeah, and yeah, get all yeah. that. Um, but that was it. That was all kind of tough as well, like not being able to relax. But then after the 2010 World Cup, I remember he completely went the other way. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. started letting you come down in your shorts, be a bit more relaxed at dinner. There's a bit more options on the menu because yeah, yeah. I think he realised that it wasn't really working. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't working. Players so were too much on edge all the time. Exactly. Like, yeah. So I think he kind of he kind of changed it up a little bit because you think about it. You've got your club form. You've got a certain weight at your club. He can't then, because he's only got you for 10 days, completely change up yeah, everything he yeah, used to. Yeah. So I think he then realised that. Someone explained that to him. I mean, he softened a lot. Did he, uh, yeah. But then he, and he lasted, what, six months before yeah. he got the sack? So what was it like when you <coughs> would go back to your rooms because you hear hear things like you just couldn't do anything? Like well, you'd with be on Southgate. Edge. You, know, you could still go and do a bit, but you'd be on edge worrying that, like, if you made a bit of noise. Like, sometimes people, not sometimes, a lot of time, people take their PlayStations and stuff yeah. like that and they'll plug them into the telly in the rooms and stuff like that. And you might have your mic on and you're talking and stuff. You'd always be on edge thinking, if he hears me, might just get a bang on the door and he's coming, like, bowling in, yeah. sort of thing. Like, they, you would always be on edge. It was, right, there was another thing he did, right, where um, when you had dinner, he would he would make everybody wait, yeah, until the last person had finished di- dinner. And sometimes, like, what? People like to just get in, nail their dinner, and then just go off to the rooms and yeah. chill. Do you know what I mean? It was almost like he wanted people to stay and chat and like be a team and stuff mm. like that. But it's too forced sometimes. You can't do that, right? And um, I had already, I, I, I'd got in late because I'd had talking to somebody. Blah, blah, blah. So anyway, I'm sat there on this big long table of all. This is when all the big boys were in you there, like Ro- is... Rooney, Ronaldo, yeah. Lampard, Gerrard, Ronaldo. all that kind of <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Did I say Ronaldo? Yeah. Oh, sorry, Rooney, Rio. You definitely weren't there. Um, and, and I was sitting there, like, so I was like, last one to start eating, basically. So I'm thinking, shit, I need to get this down quick because otherwise all the lads are going to be going, come on, like, come on. So anyway, I'm eating. And then again, I've got like Beck sitting opposite me there. And I'm fretting away, thinking, I don't want everybody to be going, Fuzzy, Fuzzy, yeah. hurry up, hurry up, yeah. yeah, hurry up. So I'm like eating as quick as I can, like, and I, I can notice that the lads are looking and I'm thinking, oh, this is horrible. Beck's opposite me is still eating as well, mate. The most bothered ever like he's sitting there chilling like looking down at the lads going yeah sweet and I'm like bright red shitting myself thinking oh yeah. don't don't it was horrible weren't it that, that's the worst thing you're right because that you're right you having to be the last yeah. and that puts you on edge straight mm. away because I think it's uncalled for just eat your food if you want to go back to your room go back to your room but you're right if you're bigger yeah then it's alright if Bex is doing it you, just, you go alright Bex is eating but if I was doing it and they're waiting for me I'm there going oh no can't even enjoy my food just waffling it down like that oh, because no. yeah, it's just horrible. unnecessary so when you guys were with England, was Beck's captain? Yeah, you, yeah. How was he as a captain? Oh, yeah, he, been, yeah. he was good as he was good as a captain. I got got on quite well with him. Um, I thought he was did, did everything properly. Um, we talk about superstar of, of the game. Um, so I hadn't had no issues with him. And to be fair, one thing I'd say about him as well: 
I mean, Foz, you probably know him better than I do, but I never thought he kind of abused his power. Yeah. That makes mm. sense. He, even though he's captain, he's a nice lad, isn't he? Just, he? just like a good he was lad. One of, the, one of the guys, do you yeah. know what I mean? So he, he was a good captain. Did, yeah. you hear, did you hear that story that he used to bring Lego to England all the time? No. Apparently, he used to be like, he's mad into his Lego. So he would bring like a massive thing to do, like a Death Star or something like that, a big Star Wars something. And then he would disappear because he would, he would just disappear in his room kind of He'd thing. Get and, with your dad, chill, he? and he would just sit in his room doing his Lego thing while he's away. Serious? Yeah. Wow. That. How did you find him, Ben? Uh, again, same as same as Benny. Uh, just a nice guy. Like he obviously he's a massive name and stuff, but he's just a good guy, isn't yeah. he? Just a nice bloke. Just went about his business. And, professional. And in terms of football ability, where does he where does he sit? Ah, uh, yeah. It's a good so I don't person, I don't think he's as good as people like Gerard. No, Scholes. Nah, I'm with you. Yeah, no, like, like different he, players, different positions yeah. and stuff, but still, yeah. Technique and talk about one attribute that he's got. He's got a world class right yeah, foot, yeah, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah. Set, but talk about everything else. Gerard yeah. was a pff, animal, wasn't he? Animal, man. <sighs> Everything, <laughs> running forward, running back, tackle, yeah. shooting, intensity, yeah. everything. He was everything. Right? Did, it, everything. did it surprise you when you joined up with England and you for the first time and yeah, saw course, play, I'm played thinking, playing with him? Kind when, of when you start, when you look at these, I mean, I, I got into the England squad relatively early into my Premier League career. So, but I'm at Charlton, which is obviously a small club yeah, compared yeah. to Chelsea's, United's, yeah, Arsenal's. Yeah. And when I'm sitting at the table, I'm looking and I'm just seeing big hitters left and right. It's like, oh my goodness. So I'm, I'm, I'm preparing for training, like I'm preparing for a game, like stretching <laughs> in my room, getting the fluids on board and that. And I'm thinking, like the standard's probably going to go up a couple of notches from when I'm at Charlton. Yeah. <laughs> but just seeing these guys operate. And good the Charlton team, though. It was a good Charlton Sorry, team, mate. but it wasn't like what Steven Gerrard, Lampard, Rio. Yeah. Honestly, it was a real eye opener because I just knew that if I didn't bring it for training, if you look like a possession, yeah. if I gave the ball away and I've got these guys chasing it down because I keep giving it away, it was something that I had to really focus on. It was honestly scary, but it was good. I enjoyed it. Did you find that when you went, went away with England then went back to Charlton, you were a little bit sharper, you were on it a yeah, bit more? Yeah, my levels went up. Did they, really? Yeah, because all of a sudden now, I'm, I'm going back to Charlton, no disrespect, with some good players there, but it was one of them where if I give the ball away, yeah. I'll probably get it back relatively quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. England, honestly, if you, if these boys are chasing, got like to Rio and Rooney, keeping possession, and I keep giving it away, they're going to get on to me. But I went back to Charlton, my standards went up, but it was almost like, well, I know that if I do make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. Yeah, Whereas yeah, yeah. with England, you felt like every they were session, on you, weren't on they? You. They weren't like killing you. They weren't killing you like shout that, nah, but they were like, hey, come on. And so it was constantly, you had to just be like... Switched on. Switched on all the time. It was class to be fair. Really, really good. Um, just quickly, talking about England then, um, who was your favourite England manager you played for? <sighs> it's probably going to it's gonna have to be Capello. Really, yeah? yeah. It's going to have to be because Sven, not, no, not for me. He's very quiet, wasn't he, Very Sven? quiet. Very quiet. Got absolutely bossed by the big players, he didn't did, he? did, didn't he? Yeah. Like, no no oh, kind no. of authority yeah. at all. Did he? Yeah, bully him. Yeah. Bully him. Yeah. Wow. Very what, in terms of just do what they want. <laughs> do what they want. If they said they were fit, they were fit. If they weren't, they weren't. He didn't really say a lot of anything, no. even like before matches and stuff, like on match day, like just quiet as a mouse, honestly. I think that was the opportunity when we could have won stuff. Yeah. Around yeah. that time, yeah. anyway. Yeah. Around that time, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, McLaren, he was, I like, I like, yeah, I had okay. Steve Darby as well. He was all right, yeah. to be fair. I, yeah. I felt a bit sorry for Steve because when he got the job, he wasn't everyone's favourite, was he? Remember him getting yeah. pelters before yeah, he even true, got the yeah. job, but he was all right, but probably. Fabio for me, Capello. Do, do you think he didn't have the the right profile, Steve McLaren? Wasn't a big enough name? Well, maybe? Because, but I think because they had their their eyes set on some of the bigger managers at the time that were out there. Yeah. When it then was like, well, Steve McLaren's available. It was almost like, hmm. and that's no disrespect to Steve, yeah, but yeah, yeah. they were getting linked to who was it? Scalari, I think maybe yeah, was one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Other managers, but when it fell back to Steve, it was almost like the nation were just like, although the guys that wrote the papers were just like, oh, oh. and then they had it out for him. So like, remember straight away like Wally and the Brolly and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Like they just horrible back in the day, yeah. weren't they? But they're lucky though because there was no platform to fight back. Yeah, which is why that. now they've had to bend a little bit. Exactly. Because all of a sudden, if they say, oh, Ben Foster made a mistake, he's this, da 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 da. Yeah. You go hold a second here at so and so. This ain't the case, like, yeah. and you ever go back, and I all know. of a sudden, all your following gets onto these people. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, it's, of course it's good. Yeah, this is why this is why the England team, I think, now are doing like so much better of kind of thing because they they've got the media on their side of it because every they're a little bit more afraid now of writing like like unfounded stuff. You better bring facts and figures exactly. and everything, mate. Yeah, you better be fair. good to go. Do you know what I mean? And a lot of these players have got big followings now on their social media, yeah. millions and millions of followers. So if someone writes an article, and all it takes, say Raheem Sterling, for instance, use him as an example. They say something about him. He asks the, the whoever wrote the article. Yeah. All, <sighs> all the millions of Raheem yeah. Sterling followers. He's are getting gonna, dogs abuse. Dogs abuse. Yeah, I know. So you have to be careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got do. I got tagged in a Man United post yesterday. I did a podcast for them the other week, and I got tagged in it yesterday. Right, mate, my feed is clogged up to death. Right, of all just Man United fans, not even commenting on the podcast. They're just saying 
we want Glazers out. We want commercial, commercial yeah. FC. Get, um, like, yeah. sign a player, sign a manager. Ten Hag, uh, uh, mate. It's literally just refreshing. Yeah, exactly. Every like you second got, is new. Did a piece like. on you earlier on in the season, and um, it was really interesting because it was a bit of a sloppy article. It was a very sloppy article. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And a lot of your followers kind of came on and just called the journalist out. Yeah. And were like, this is really lazy journal. They weren't abusing him because you'd never advocate that. But they was they were speaking. Yeah. They were saying, this is figures. lazy journalism. It's fine if you've like, got like, a source close to. Come on. Yeah. You know, give us more than that. But, that, but that's the thing. Now now players, and well, everybody's got a platform now to fight back, which is why you're probably right. The national team, going away with an England team now, is probably a little bit more relaxed. Because yeah, you go, yeah. well, if I do make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. Whereas back then, you make a mistake, they're on you, aren't they? Yeah. Back page of every paper, useless. This, that, the other. They'll be on the front page sometimes. Front page, mate. yeah. Honestly, now. horrible. This is why I love listening to you on Talk Sport, mate. I do. Honestly, I'm not, again, I'm not <laughs> trying to blow smoke up your ass, Bentley, but I do. I absolutely buzz off listening to you because you see it from the footballer side, but yeah. you're always, all, also a sensible bloke. And so you'll tell it as, like, you, you'll never say somebody's rubbish or somebody's crap or something because footballers aren't crap. They aren't, they're you trying their best. You can't be crap to be at that exactly, level. Exactly, exactly. But you see what they're going through. You're seeing what they're trying to do, at least. They might be suffering a bit of low confidence, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Like, so you say it as you say, and I love you for that, mate. I think it's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> so when we're like, so talking about footballs, obviously you started at Ipswich, mm. um, moved on to Charlton, uh, young man, two and a half million quid. So... Alan Kerbishley was he your gaffer yeah, there? He was, yeah. Okay, how was Alan Kerbishley? Yeah, it was great. Alan Kerbishley, he probably one of the old school English yeah. managers. Yeah. Was another one who'd been linked to England before. He'd been linked he had, a number yeah. of times. Yeah, yeah. Linked, to, I think Aston Villa job, big jobs. But he was just perfect for me. Told it how it is, and what what I think gave me the confidence that kind of first step up to the Premier League. Well, not first up because I had a little taste with Ipswich. Yeah. Was that he basically just said to me like black and white? Listen, I'm buying you to start first game of the season I'm not buying you to put you into a squad and then you find you can grow develop and stuff nah before you even sign me I'm signing you to start day one so listen if you're not ready first game of the season that's not my fault that's your fault because I've told you now you're going to be stuck so I don't care if you don't score a goal pre-season you're starting game one to get yourself ready so that's what I need to hear you got off to a flyer as well didn't you yeah did you I mean I have got five of my first five games or something crazy like that player of the month yeah August but it helps I think for any new and this is why it baffles me now with transfers why do you sign players for big money and not start them straight away? Yeah, I know. You say you uh, you want them to fail. Yeah, to put them straight true. in. It's like so, Van der Beek at United when they signed him. Mate, and they, I was like, mate, I'm you could go through the whole Man United squad and do that. Play yeah. with players like that, Sancho and you know what yeah. I mean, Brani and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Players like that come in like we'll give them a little bit to bed in and stuff like no. that. No chance. Just put them straight in. Let yeah. them go. As, 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 as a centre forward, it's even more important for yeah, me. for me. It was always important. You have to hit the ground running. Is that is that for so as a striker then? you need your manager to be basically going, right, you are going to win us a game again today. Is yeah. that what makes you like tick? Pro- yeah, like- no, knowing that you haven't got that, I mean, it's a bit more different now because it's rotation, but you need a manager that's always going to say to you, regardless, because yeah. I remember going five games without a goal, six games, that would never happen now. Two games out, get out of the team. Yeah. But that he just goes, you're my centre forward, doesn't really matter if you go five, six games, yeah. you're still going to play. So you know eventually you're not going to go that, that long without a goal, but you've got that belief in your manager and that tells you, that he believes in you as well. Yeah, so, yeah. and when a manager believes in you, you know what it's like. If he yeah. believes in you, you'll do anything for him. It's class, isn't it? Yeah. So, so what was so when Alan Kerbishley left Charlton, obviously went to West Ham. Mm. Um, I was so surprised that he never resurfaced. I know he went technical director at Fulham, but remember for a period of about five years, every job that went, he was yeah. two to one favourite. Yeah. It seemed like never for about five years. Why? Again, he, yeah. Why do you think he never? I know there was a bit of a case with West Ham that he won, you know, whatever. But why do you think he never resurfaced yeah, in management? I don't know. I've never, well, was, I've never played for him. I don't think I've even met him, to be fair. Yeah, he was brilliant. And to be fair to him, when he went to West Ham, at the end of the season, we got relegated. Because Charlton Football Club has never been the same since he no, left. Yeah. And you're talking, what, he left in 2005. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's never, 2006 has never been the same. He tried to sign me when I left Charlton, because we went down, to go to West Ham. Did he, really? But yeah. I went to Spurs, yeah. I'd, 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 I look back and you think, oh, but at the time, I, I just couldn't have gone to West Ham over Spurs because Spurs have finished would, fifth Would Spurs twice. have paid the money? Uh, would West Ham have paid the yeah, money? Yeah, they would give me more money really? wages wise because wow. that's when they had that mad period West Ham where uh, the, the egg little, guy what's his name? Yeah, yeah. Um, the Icelandic guy Magnuson Yeah, 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 yeah. Eggert yeah. Magnuson yeah. Yeah. Egg, where they yeah. were throwing money egg, like, well, I only say egg because he had yeah. a bold head and his name <laughs> is Eggert Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That, yeah. that was that period there where they were throwing Mate, Lundberg silly on like underground a week and stuff Lucas like Neil. that. Yeah, yeah, underground a week, right yeah. back. They were throwing <laughs> money. Neil, do you remember that? Honestly, throwing money about. But was it, that the Tevez time? Uh, Tevez Mascherano. was Garano. Yeah, Tevez was that wow. time as well. But I think Tevez went to United. Did he go to United or City? Where they went? No, he went to United. They? United first. Yeah, he went to United yeah. first. Right. Yeah. 
Bloody hell, yeah. Remember that? Eggert Magnuson. People don't talk about no, this kind but that, of stuff No, but that anymore. period there, Kieran Dyer as well, they gave yeah. him crazy money. Couldn't stay fit. Bellamy. Yeah. So it was that kind of mad uh, period. But for Alan Kerbishley, I mean, it's, you're right, because I had him as a technical director at Fulham. But he just never seemed to be able to get himself back in. He was always linked to the Villa job. He thought he had he thought he had that job and they gave it to Gerard Houllier. He, yeah. thought, he, had, he thought he had another job and they gave it to somebody else. He, That's he, mad. Because yeah. like from the outside looking in, it almost looked like he was waiting to pick the right job himself. Yeah, no. Just but couldn't then, get back in. But then that's a way, like, once you once you go too long without a job, it's like people stop mentioning you and then that's it. It's like yeah. a bit like that with Eddie Howe for a period, you thought, <sighs> yeah, he, he, kind of pigeon, he needs to get back in here. He needs to get back bit, in yeah. here a bit. Yeah. Um, all right, so anyway, then 16 and a half mil to Spurs, yeah? Mm. What's that like? What's it, So basically... I've been at smaller clubs and then I've been at a bigger club and then you see the difference in everything, in the facilities, in the way that they train, mm. the professionalism, all that kind of stuff. Was it a massive step up like that? Yeah, I mean, the training ground was, it was a big step up, but to be fair, if I'm honest, when I look at the, the three training grounds before that, well, the two, Ipswich, Charlton, and then going to Spurs, Ipswich was probably the best out of the lot. Ah, uh, really? Yeah, probably, I'd, I'd probably say so, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a big step up. The player that was there now, you talk about the likes of Berber, Bobby oh, King, yeah. Defoe, um, Jermaine Genus, I mean, Ledley King. Wow. That, the, the team. Good was Ledley King? Oh, my God. I promise you, he would have been the best. Really? Yeah, he would have been the best by some distance. But he had no knees, like, nah, unfortunately yeah. for him. Like, he used to train. It, when I first got there, he would train on a Friday. We'd do an old V Young on a Friday train. Then, towards the end, he'd just go out and do, like, a few volleys. And then, towards the end, he would just go in the pool and swim on a Friday. Wow. Oh. And he was just playing matches? Oh, play matches. Man the match every time he played. What was it? It was just bone on bone with him. No cartilage. No cartilage left. at all. Oh. But I think he had it in both his knees. Oh mate. But honestly, and I think because his his right knee was so bad, he trained himself to play with his left foot, which is <laughs> which is phenomenal. But he yeah he would have been for me the, the very very best. But it was just a step up in quality. Was it? Training was better. Um, Martin Yell as a manager was a little bit maybe bent towards towards the the senior players a little yeah. bit more. How old are you at this point here? Twenty three. Yeah, he's still young. Aren't still you? young. Yeah. yeah. So but going there. Because it did, for me, it didn't go well at Spurs. Like I'm, yeah. I'm openly admit that it didn't go well at Spurs. Even though I was top goal scorer the second season, yeah, yeah. didn't go well. But what it did do was make me grow up yeah. as a as a person and a player. Because the next time the big transfer fee came around again, didn't Good bother to me. Go, really. Didn't bother me. Yeah, didn't bother me. At yeah. all. So didn't you sign? Uh, I was, I'm sure I saw a picture. Weren't you the same day that Bale signed? Or same yeah, window? me, me, Bale, and Eunice Cabal right. all signed. And even he got off to a, a horrendous start, Gareth Bale. Bale like, mate, they didn't win a game for like 15 games years. Or yeah. or something. It, might been, it might have been a year and a half. Yeah, yeah it, it was, was ridiculous. Wasn't it was like 40 odd games yeah. or something <clears throat> obscene. Hey, I remember when I was at Birmingham, somebody somebody in like the hierarchy there said that we they, they had a bid for him for one and a half million, and Tottenham were genuinely considering yeah. doing it because he got off to such a bad start. His confidence was so low. Like every time he went on the pitch, they would lose guarantee. He was having bad games. Birmingham made a bid for him. One and a half million pound, he said, and it was like really stuck. He was the left back at this point, wasn't he? He was. And yeah. you know what's funny, I was I was sat in a meeting where he was struggling and Harry Rednap was like, um that basically awful, like, terrible, you're not strong enough, you're weak. Really? And then we're gonna send him to Forest. He was saying that in front of the lads. If all the lads he like we was going for a bit of a bad spell. Yeah, yeah. We was all in a team meeting and Harry just went through all the players like to be fair to him, he was like Jonathan Woodgate, Ledley King, got no problems with you. Brilliant. Jermaine Genus had a pop at JJ, had a pop at me. David Bentley got it. Yeah. Uh, Gareth Bell got it. But I remember they were going to send him again to Forest that long. Wow. And obviously fast forward. I remember coming back. I'd left by this point and we played them early on in the season. And I remember looking at him thinking, what's he been doing? <laughs> yeah. Absolute comeback, a monster. <laughs> the massive legs, <laughs> huge. I know. Massive. But no, it was, um, as I said, it was a real eye-opener at Spurs. It was just tough trying to break into that front four. Um, that's, no, a, that's a big front four to, to be like big front three to be joining yeah. so you must be signing there thinking wow mate I've got Dimitar Berbatov mm-hmm. in front of me here. do you know what I mean Robbie Keane yeah. like, big boys aren't they yeah, it, it, was one of them, yeah. it was almost one of them I felt to myself I'm going to go there and give it a go I had to yeah. didn't want to shirt the challenge but if I didn't it didn't work out for me I'd leave there being a better player yeah. having trying to get in front of these players so I, obviously I gave it a go They three of them left at the end of that first season, didn't oh, they? Really? Yeah. Kino, Berber, and Berber went uh, and Defoe went to Portsmouth. Who came in Crouch? Even did he? No, it was uh, no. Nah, Berber went in Christmas. Berber went in Christmas, didn't he? Yeah, uh, January, January January yeah. transfer. Window, no, so. no, it was last w- uh, day of the uh, summer. Was it? Yeah, same transfer. one. Same one's Rubinho yeah. went to Man City. That's Man City. It. Yeah, but it was Pavlichenko came in and Fraser Campbell. Mate, Fraser yeah. Campbell, young kid. Yeah. So we we went from having four 
obviously recognised strikers to two really me and Pavlichenko. Yeah. So it completely changed. Yeah, I was I was a Spurs fan as a kid, so I kind of like I'm all I'll all I've always looked out for him and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I remember like even back in the like Sergi Rebroff players like that. Do you yeah. remember that playing for Spurs <laughs> yeah. and stuff? Yeah. Pavlichenko, I was at Blues and he scored the goal that relegated us that season as well. That was the one where we had like 42 points or something at Birmingham, still oh. got relegated, gutted, man. Yeah, that's the season. season. Yeah. Craig Gardner scored a rocket, didn't he? And yeah, it he did. Yeah, and then Pavlichenko scored a deflected one last minute, dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Um, <laughs> After Martin Yole, Juan de Ramos, Ramos came in. Yeah. So I heard a little story recently, a little anecdote talking about from the England days, taking away your apple crumble or something. Yeah. For, like he complete, again, another Capello took away everything. Salt, pepper, crumble. Oh, at club level. At club level. Oh, so mate. you're talking about, honestly, Fozzie, you're talking about now dry pasta, nah. no sauce. How can you eat pasta, no sauce? Olive oil. Olive oil. Mate, that's still miserable. That's miserable. <laughs> one one meat option, one fish option. That was it. No no, no no real selection. So he did that because he, he felt like everyone should be at a certain weight. But Michael Dawson, and he won't mind me saying this, he ended up on a drip because his diet changed that much. He just couldn't get enough no. nutrients and nutrients all the good stuff into him. Yeah. No, so obviously Body went into shock a bit. Collapsed, yeah. Collapsed. So <laughs> what weren't great, but I mean, to be fair to him, one day came in, he won the, the League Cup. Um... Was, was done well to, to a point but just tried to change too much too quickly and yeah. then the start of the second season just couldn't get going and, and again I get it from his perspective he lost he did lose Keno Berbatov had scored 50 goals between them the season before the foe had gone I think a couple of other players had left as well and he was kind of left with what do you expect me to do but then he didn't start well at all yeah is that when Harry Redknapp came in after mm. this? Yeah, he did, yeah. Obviously, we got to another League Cup final. Yeah. You got man the match. Didn't yeah, you? that was Man the match yeah. against Spurs, yeah. I remember saving that shot from you where you cut in, you, you turned out and then drilled that it. That was low. late doors as well, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, late doors, yeah. drilled it low at my feet. <laughs> yeah. And I've like, my legs were apart, so I've had to just, just sort of like get them together a bit to stop it going through. Thankfully, just got them in in time. Yeah. But yeah, mate, that was decent. I enjoyed that game. That was yeah, nice, it was, that, it was good it? fun, to be fair. But no, it was. And when Harry came in, we got to think about because a lot of people will ask me about the Harry Redknapp relationship. And when he first came in couldn't have got to a better start I think yeah. I got off to six and six but you know when you've got you know when you're playing but the only reason I'm still playing is because I'm scoring yeah. but you know what he's still looking for you know he's waiting you're on what he's waiting yeah 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 and I remember I thought we played Fulham and I didn't play very well even though I had six and six before that didn't play very well and he took me off and that was it our relationship just like it was almost like well hold on what have I, I've done before this and then the following week missed the chance against Portsmouth the header which says his wife can score it and then it just deteriorated from there. Really? Just went down, yeah, completely spiral out. Was it there. that incident? Did that bo- does that bother you as a pro? Because obviously, the way it comes across in the media, it was almost a bit of tongue in cheek in the fact that you missed missed a chance, and he said, "My missus could have scored that mm. one." D- did that upset you at the time? A little bit because I thought, well, hold on, like, like I was in quite good form. Do you yeah. know what I mean, like I, as I said, I'd scored loads of goals up up until that point, and then I know it was off the cuff, and but it was just like Harry being Harry. But I think what annoyed me was. If he'd have said it and then that would have been the end of it, I'd have been like, that's fine. Yeah. But because they blew it out of proportion where it was then everywhere, my white back pages and all that, he's then yeah. start thinking it's, it's unnecessary. Do you know what I mean? It takes away the objective of what I'm trying yeah. to do. Do you know what I mean? So, I mean, we spoke about it now and we laugh about it now, but at the time it was just unnecessary. It kills you, know I mean? you a bit that way. Really, it does kill it? you. Unnecessary, because, isn't it? Because I'm, I'm, you know that it's going to make news. Exactly. And everywhere I'm going now, you yeah. get people, random people in the street going, oh, my wife could have scored that. Mate. And they think it's funny. Yeah. But I don't think it's funny. Of course you don't. Friggin' out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's your job, isn't it? At the end of the day, of someone's. Course. But like you said, you'd been you're smashing it, and then you, you get a couple of bad games or whatever, or even a bad, you know, a, a bad game. missing a chance. Have you ever had it, Foss, when someone's manager's kind of had a dig at you in public? Um, nah, not really. Like I say, the only thing I can remember really is when um, at United, Alex Ferguson did it kind of to my face. <laughs> <laughs> and you told me this the other day. Yeah. I'd never heard this story before you told it's me this the other day. Go Man on. City like, derby one where we've lost 4-3 and I chucked like two in. It was horrible, right? And he, he didn't know I was here and he's watching the goals in the changing rooms on the telly and I'm having a stinker, mate. Goals are just going through my crumble hands. Like kind of, it was horrible. And I heard him go, Cool, time for a rest, lad. And I'm like sitting there going, oh, no, that's me. He's talking about time me. Time for a um, rest, lad. Yeah, but that kind of gets in your head a bit. But even that, like, that got in my head to the point where I'm thinking, well, I ain't playing again here. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If he's got that in his head and he's thinking that about me, then he's got to have doubts. Yeah. He's got to have doubts. But surely you'll, you'll have managers that you play, like you said, you're scoring, scoring, but they're almost waiting. And is that just because you're just not their type of player? Yeah. Or they just want to bring in their own guy? I think a little bit of both. Like, Harry bought the foe back. In the January, didn't he? he did, didn't he? Yeah. yeah, he brought him back. Um, so obviously that that helped him of, of get what he wanted to do. But you're right. Even though I was scoring, he just didn't like. I just wasn't his type of player. Like he wanted to bring. He'd had successful times at Portsmouth with 
Defoe and Crouchy. So he wanted them to again. So obviously he kept me linked with Crouchy. So Crouchy ultimately ended up coming at the end of that season. Obviously moved on, but it was just one of them where I just knew that it weren't going to fit. So when I came back the, the following preseason, when he was still there, I had a conversation and he was like, "Listen, I'm, I'm prepared to let you go." I'm yeah. like, well, you, "You're going to have to help me here because at the end of the day, we know what Daniel Levy's like. He makes it so hard for you to leave." Really? Yeah. Is if that you, a thing? Is that a genuine yeah, thing with Spurs? Yeah. Genuine. But I said, if you want me to leave, you're going to have to help me. Because he's not going to make it easy. Of course, for me. yeah. So you want him basically to go in and say, right, we're, we're selling him. Yeah, exactly. So get yeah. rid of him, sell him for a, for a decent price. Obviously, you don't like skimp on it or whatever, but sell, get him out the door. Kind yeah, of thing. and I'll bring in who I want to bring in, and that's yeah. what, and that's why it worked. Wow. Um, were you in the was Harry Kane in the youth team coming through? Yeah, but I wouldn't have seen him because back then we was at Luxbury Lane training ground where it was like the first team we trained like away from it, separate, from separate, each yeah, 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 miles yeah. away. Yeah, I heard a lot about Harry Kane when he was younger. You know that. Nobody ever could have like predicted he he was going to do what he did. You no. know? a lot of players who were with him in that youth team said, "Don't get me wrong, he was decent. And he had a bit and blah blah blah." But to go from that to what he is now, yeah. where like I remember, like, any time I play against Harry Kane, I'm thinking, "Mate, he could score from anywhere." This guy, yeah, anywhere, left foot, right foot, he can absolutely dig the life out of it. Like just baller, strong as a like, holds yeah. it up well. What a player, beautiful, very good, very good. And then how about the Sunderland move? So um, tell us how that kind of came about. Yes, it was one of them where obviously they finally they agreed the fee, uh, Spurs and Sunderland. Although I got kicked off the plane, I don't know about uh, at Spurs. So I was no, we don't I know. Don't this know. Yeah, no, this one didn't yeah, come up. Yeah, so we, we were going to Hong Kong in pre-season. Yeah. Now I've been arguing all day, saying, "What if you're going to sell me to Sunderland?" Because I've made it abundantly clear where I wanted to go. Yeah. Why are you going to take me halfway around the world? Because I've got, I've got Tottenham saying to me, <clears> if they don't put this money in, you're not going. You're coming to Hong Kong. And I've got Sunderland saying, if he gets on the plane to go to Hong Kong, we're not doing the deal. Oh, wow. So I remember sitting there going, all damn, on the phone to Harry, on the phone to Daniel. I can't remember the chief executive name. Who's the guy who went to United from Spurs? Chief executive. Um, from Spurs? He was at Spurs and he went to United. I can't remember his name. I don't know. Can't help you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well he, he, was on, he was at Spurs and I remember... Like we were at the airport, all the lads are winding me up now. So he's, he's getting in my head. Mate. They're going, Bentley, you're going to Hong Kong. I'm like, I'm not going to Hong Kong. He's going, Aaron Lennon and JJ and Tom Anderson are worse. <laughs> Bentley, you're going on. We're born the plane. Like, Bentley, I told you, I'm like, I'm not going. Yeah, so they're joking at this point, right? But you are genuinely, genuinely really snapping up. now. Yeah. You're snapping now. Because this is real life Real now. life. This is real life. They get on the plane. They shut the door. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm going to Hong Kong. I'm going, <laughs> what is, I'm on the, I've honestly got my, my phone out. What is going on? He comes walking from the, the back of the plane. Levy? No, not Levy. Edward, was it Edward? Edward? No, it was no, someone, I need to figure his name, but he, he comes walking from the back of the plane and goes, right, Darren, we've read, and they do accept it now so you can uh, get off the plane. And they got you on the plane? I'm on the plane, sitting in my seat, door shut. So what's happened here then? So I've gone, all right, so I've got up now, the boys are going, hey, and I'm, in, I'm like, like, good luck, lads, <laughs> see you soon. They've had to open the door, obviously I've got no transport to get home, so I have to get a taxi. Sort yourself out. Yeah, <laughs> from a taxi from Gatwick to my house. Get some stuff. Get some stuff. But then, no, that's not even the worst part about it. So I do that. <laughs> they take off. I'm sitting in my house now. Monday passes. Tuesday passes. Wednesday passes. Nothing. Thursday, Friday. They still can't agree a fee, right? Oh, wow. Gets to about six, seven days later. That's when I put the tweet out. When I say, oh, uh, I don't want to go to Hull. I don't want to go to Stoke. I want to go to Sunderland. So we'll leave you stuff. You fun. did this? Yeah, Put that out. Can I say that? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I stopped effing about. So obviously I got fined for that, putting that tweet out. The deal to Sunderland doesn't get done. What was the fine? Week's wages? Yeah, week's wages. No, yeah. two week's wages. Wow, two, two that's weeks heavy, out. that. Right, but no, they didn't tell me that at the time. They waited till I got to Sunderland and then said, oh, we're only going to pay you this because you've been fined two weeks. But the deal didn't get done until the boys had got back from Hong Kong. Oh, mate. How long they've had that? Two, just ten, ten, ten days. days. So I have ten days doing nothing. <laughs> this is what we were speaking to Mahata Malongo about mm. recently on the podcast and saying this just wouldn't go in any Imagine, other, any in any other industry would it no. it wouldn't happen like, no. p- people don't realise this is people's lives like you, Benty's moving from London up to Sunderland, Sunderland yeah. away. you need to get some summit sorted yeah. you've got to get like a place to live like you know what I mean mm. if you've got family you've got to take them up you pull them out of school all that kind of stuff yeah. mate yeah. My God. At the time I was on my own, so it was all right, but it was still just a ball it because it could have been done yeah. weeks before that. Of course. But, and I, d- I didn't end up signing for Sunderland until I think we had one pre season game and then it was the Premier League start next season. Mate. The next no week. Way. So, so they dragged the it out as long as they All the pre season. I, did, I didn't really do a pre season. I did a bit with Spurs, but when, when I got off the plane, the moment I got off the plane, Nothing. Mate, that's naughty. That 18 and a half mil, was it, in total? You went up to 16 and a half, 16 mil, mm-hmm. yeah. I think it rose to... And this is just, is just purely Daniel Levy haggling over a few million. Penny out of Canyon. That's what he does, isn't it? Mate. 
I don't know, but still, somebody's going to have to... Uh, somewhere down the road, this will catch up with people, this will. Do you know what I mean? You can't treat yeah. people like that. This is real life, like I say. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying, but the, the counter-argument is the contract's there. Yeah, true that, true you that. Know, uh, t- t- sign a shorter-term contract. Yeah, you no, know, just, imagine, to play, just to play devil's advocate. Minute, he, he turns around and goes, actually, then, do you know what? I ain't going. I'm going to chill here and my back hurts so I can just sit here and just chill and take my money. Yeah. People do that. Do you know what I mean? They do. It gets to a point where it gets to a real principle thing where people, I've seen it, where people go, I'll tell you what, and screw you, I'm just going to sit there and I'll say my back's hurt every day. And I've seen players do it, What was the lad at Chelsea? What was the lad at Chelsea? players do it. What was the lad at Chelsea? Was it Winston Bogart? Winston Bogart. Did about three years, didn't he? Exactly, He's in Holland. Yeah. Fly, fly over every morning. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, dug in, dug in. Yeah, commuted from he Holland. Flew every over. Day. Flew over. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Yeah. Flew over. <laughs> That's unreal. Okay, so you're now you're uh, right, Sunderland. So um, would I be right in saying these were your your prime Darren Bent years? Yeah, I mean that first season was was definitely one where because obviously what had gone on at Spurs it was almost like a drive, in a drive, and I can remember Steve Bruce saying to me. You don't need any motivation this season. Just go and score goals. Yeah. And that was it. Do, just do, do, concentrate on that. The rest will take care of itself. So it was almost like from the very first game, I just wanted to go and show people that obviously I was a good player and that I could score goals and the whole Spurs thing was just one of them things that happens. And as you said there, it ultimately worked out well for both parties because I think they got themselves in the Champions League Spurs that season. Yeah. And I went on to obviously score the most goals I've ever scored in my career in one season. Did you score against Spurs that season? Twice. <laughs> no, but the, yeah. no, but the worst part about it was though, I scored two after... 16 minutes or something crazy. Oh. Got two more penalties in the game. Missed them both. You did? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. oh, no. So I could have had four Gomez. Saved. Uh, mate, he's the man though, yeah. mate. I don't even blame you. He saved penalty right, left and centre. His arms were incredible, yeah. weren't they? So, the longest arms I've ever seen. His arms were that much longer than mine. Yeah. Seriously. Mate, he used to make saves in training where I'd go, I can't make that save, Gomez. I yeah. can't reach what you can reach. Like, he's ridiculous. Yeah. So what yeah, a guy. He saved the two, so I could have had four. Wow, go me. What a frigging legend. Uh, Brucey, Steve Bruce, legend, yeah. Yeah, he was good. He brilliant for me that season. Was he? Yeah, really, really good for me that season. As I said, kept it simple. Yeah. Um, didn't complicate it. Told me what he wanted. Put a good team around me that could supply me chances. We had a good team up there as well. Yeah, we probably was, underachieved because we should have... We should probably should have finished inside the top ten. Who were you playing? Who was in the team when you were there? So it was like Steve Marbronk was one. Yeah, wow. Oh, yeah, 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 big Kenwin Jones. Yeah, oh, mate, Your Kenwin. Mate. Yeah, big oh, <laughs> Kenwin. Big Kenwin. Um, who else did we have? We had people like Kieran Kenwin Richardson. Was horrible. He was so strong. Kieran Richardson, yeah. solid as your light left back. Do, back do you remember Lorik Sana? Captain Marseille. Who? So, so we had Lorik Sana, right? We bought him from Marseille. This guy for the first six months was like action man, captain, <laughs> could, was doing everything. We were going to 10 men, made no difference. He was at Angolo County, mopping up, yeah. headers, tackles. Went Got to Christmas time, January time, and he just went to Steve Bruce's office and went, do you know what? I can't do it anymore. Like, his body just packed in. Nah. He gave it everything for that first half of the season. Battered himself Battered himself. Much. I went, listen, you probably best you sell me maybe because <laughs> I can't do it anymore. <laughs> so that was it. We never saw him again second half of the season. But he still stayed at the club, just didn't never just really did, played. Came on here and there, but he just couldn't get to that intensity. Yeah, yeah, but the yeah. first half of the season, man possessed. Really? Yeah. It's amazing. See, this is, people don't realise the brain is the most important part of football, isn't yeah. it? It's the most important muscle, for sure. If you're not in, right in your head to go and do it the way that you know you can do it or should be doing That's it, it, you ain't going to be the player that you think that you want to be. Are you? you can't touch the sides unless no. you're ready in your head. Massive, no. really important. And what was Sunderland like as a um, as a club, as a, as a place? Yeah, p- again, perfect landing spot for me. I think I, I wanted to get as far away from London as possible. Um, I wanted to go to somewhere where all they care about is football. And if yeah. you've been to the North East, yeah. yeah. that's all everybody wants to talk about football. Oh, football. Even Newcastle, because at that time, my first season, they were in the Championship. So they weren't even a factor. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It was just about us, Sunderland, being in the Premier League. Yeah. But yeah, great place. Everyone was so friendly. Talked about football. Um, good team ethics there. Too, good team culture as well. Because a lot of us were from other areas. Yeah. So we've all obviously congregated. At, so you've got to make friends and you got to go out together. you yeah, got to go to dinner or all honestly, that. Honestly, everything that first season was, was brilliant. Brilliant, everything. Oh, I love it, Benty. This is nice, mate. This is a belting one, by the way. I'm really enjoying this. You're top <laughs> I told you you were led. <laughs> Friggin' love you, mate. Um, all right, and so um, Sunderland, this is where the famous beach ball. Yeah. Um, please sit, explain it from your point of view. So I can remember, um, I remember getting the ball short yeah. and, and spinning it off. So Sunderland me. versus Liverpool, yeah? At, yeah, at Stadium of Light. At Stadium of Light. We're playing really well at this time. Liverpool are having a bit of a, a ropey one, but we're playing really well at this point. Uh, in the season, so they you know, they come there to us. They've got a lot of injuries as well. Like Steven Gerrard doesn't play. Nice. Um, he buzzing when players like yeah, that. Yeah, when we see he's not on the yeah. team sheet. And I think maybe even I don't know if Torres would have been there at the time or Suarez, but there was another big hitter yeah. missing, and we went, 
lads. If ever there was a chance to get a result, how good was Suarez, by the way? You're incredible. Mate, how good was Suarez? Incredible. I still don't think people talk about him at uh, those because he didn't top play level. over here for like but eight or nine know, years. Yeah. Isn't it? He was an animal, weren't he? Everything. Animal. Touch. Horrible as yeah. well. Yeah, he's right. Horrible. <laughs> horrible. <laughs> horrible. <laughs> yeah. But it was one of them where we were said in the change room, lads. If ever there was a time we we're going to get a result against Liverpool, it's today. Yeah. We know the Carrick is still there. We know there's other players, but you take the cog out of that wheel, Steven yeah, Gerrard. It's not the same. And there was, I said, I can't remember who the other beginner was. So anyway, we we started off the game really well. We're playing really well on top, but we just can't create that opportunity. Anyway, I drop short and I spin it out wide to Andy Reid. He goes down the, right, the line, he pushes it, it goes past the defender. So I get myself in the box. I pull off Glenn Johnson a little bit. As the cross is coming in towards me, it takes a little deflection and that like, bounces up just ahead of me. So in my head, I'm always the same. Hit the target. Yeah. Hit the target. Yeah. If you hit the target, you've got a chance. So I hit it and it's it's going on target, but I don't get really any real connection on it. Like it's a good strike, but he's just, he's, he's, he's just gonna do that and yeah, he's a goalkeeper. Yeah, yeah. Glenn Johnson sticks his foot out, it goes past him. I could just remember seeing the big beach ball behind his foot. <laughs> and I remember it hitting the beach ball, going that way, and the beach ball going that way. And I remember <laughs> Pepe Reina goes to the beach ball, goes to save it, <laughs> and then the ball just pops over his shoulder, shoulder in. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember him going, Huh? And at the time, because it never happened before, nobody knew the rules. Yeah. So as I've run off celebrating, it's not even factored in my head that it shouldn't count. And we all go crazy. Half time, I'm walking in. The referee comes running up to me, like, like Bentley. Did it? Um, did it hit the beach ball? I went, Yeah, I think so. I went, Why? He went, he went, I think. I said, so. Yeah, I think so. He went, He went, Oh no! Like I don't think it should have counted. <laughs> and I, I remember saying to him, Did you see him then looking? You just did. You went, Oh no! And he sort of looked off into space. Like yeah. I can see the refo doing that now, thinking, Oh no! I'm going to get told off here. Exactly. What have I done? And I said to him, Well, listen. I said, Nothing you can do about it now. <laughs> Unlucky. But, unlucky. But even even after it happened and after the game. I didn't really think much of it. I just thought, okay, it's one of the mad things. Yeah. But the, the reaction massive. for people, it went blew up everywhere. Yeah, it was massive. Yeah, it was massive. Massive. Wait, you know, it was it was a question on um it was the a chase. question on the chase. <laughs> <laughs> Ice cream van. <laughs> <laughs> what what got in the it was basically what got what was in the way of Darren Bent's goal that went past Liverpool and there was an ice cream truck, um a, 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 ice cream. Yeah. That's what she, well, that's what she a chose. Beast ball and some <laughs> else, and she chose the ice cream truck. <laughs> <laughs> Arguably the worst <laughs> answer <laughs> ever on any game show. Ice cream van. <laughs> Got ice cream van on the pitch. She chose the ice cream. <laughs> the worst, the worst answer. But no, as I said, I just thought it was one of them rare things. But the reaction afterwards was in Crane. Yeah, it's it massive. Liverpool as well. Wow. Oh, yeah, it's class. I love it. Great time <laughs> in Liverpool. Um, Villa, big signing. Yeah, eighteen mil up to twenty-four. Alex McLeish. Your old gaffer. Ah, oh, were you there with McLeish? Yeah, he came in second. Gerard Hulier signed me. Yeah, okay, yeah. And okay. I mean, Gerard is one of the very best yeah. uh, even though I got to work with him for a short period before he got ill he was what you call a proper manager yeah. in terms of attention to detail like little things where you wouldn't even think it but he'd go if you just do this and like I'll give you an example which may, it does make me laugh when I think about it is that you know it's like if the fullbacks have got the ball if they've not got a pass you've got to run down the channel just to give them an option Yeah. first time Luke Young gets the ball he puts it down there I run out there he stops the training session he pulls me in he goes um, why, why are you running out there I said, well, Gaffer, obviously, Luke Young had no pass on, so I'm just giving him an Helping option. Him out. He went to me, no, oh, no, no. I didn't buy you to stand up, run out there. I buy you to stay in there and score goals. Don't, don't worry about all that. Let let Ashley Young and the, the wire players do that. All right. You just stay in there. From that, I don't think I've ever run a channel again. After that. <laughs> <laughs> Never again. But he was just just saw little things like he said, I, I didn't buy you to run out there. Yeah. I bought you to stay in there and score goals. That's gold for you, that. Isn't yeah. It? That is gold for you because that basically means he wants you to score goals. So midfielders, you better get running. You yeah, better yeah, get yeah, working yeah. your yeah. socks off, right? Yeah. You don't even dream of doing that out there. You just stay there and wait for it to come to you. Is all that right? like when you say? Give it to the good players. Give it to the yeah. good players, mate. <laughs> just, just said to me, just stay there. Don't worry about it. I didn't buy you to do all that nonsense oh, out there. That's gold, isn't it? Yeah, so little things like that. But he was just, I said, a great man, great person. Yeah, Always yeah. cared, not just cared about the, the person on the pitch. He wanted to know what he was doing outside. Because obviously, I'd, I'd come down from Newcastle. Yeah. What I was doing in the evenings. Um, what, what was I up to? Have I got any you family? You settled down, all that yeah, kind of stuff. How's yeah, how's my mum, how's yeah, my yeah. dad? How's, honestly, that's nice, what, a, what a person. Yeah, I like that. That means a lot. It goes a long way, that does, you know. Yeah. really does go a long way, that. But yeah, really Big Ed came in the second season. I liked him. Yeah, he's yeah. nice, isn't he? Yeah. He's a nice guy, too. Yeah, fair. he's a nice guy. Same but old. Back against the Waldo. He was yeah. a Blues manager. Villa fans, were, regardless, what, would have had to win, get into the Champions League yeah. for them to accept him. It, it was. Remember the time? It was when um, Benitez signed for Everton. Yeah. yeah. And it was the same. And you just went... It don't work. It's just not going to work, is it? Newcastle, Steve Ruth, Newcastle, yeah. Sunderland, Lynx. It just don't work, does Never going to ever going to happen. Never going to work. Don't know why no. they even bother. I know. I'm with you, mate. I'm with you. Good club, though. Enjoy your time there. Yeah, lovely club. Aston Villa. Massive football club. Massive fan base. 
good part of the world as well, the Midlands. I mean, I, I couldn't believe the size of the stadium, the training ground, second yeah, to none. Lovely stadium as well. Lovely sta- stadium. I, I, I love playing at Villa Park. I do. It's like proper old school yeah, stadium. Yeah, and it? I always found the Villa fans would give you a chance. Yeah. They'd always give you a chance because you've seen players go down there, struggle at first, but they'll give you a yeah, chance to kind of turn it around. Yeah. Really, really good supporters and good yeah, football club. You, mate. And then you. on to Derby. So you had four seasons, obviously, mm. with Derby. You're there four years at Derby? Yeah, three and a half years. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, with some loans thrown in as well. Yeah. And then, um, how old were you when you retired? 35. All yeah. right, let me, I want to ask this question, right? Because this is something that really sort of intrigues me at the minute, Bentley. Okay, so I'm getting to that age, right, where I'm sort of, retirement's there. I can see it. It's coming soon kind mm. of thing. But I don't know when I'm going to feel it. Like, I want to keep going. I'm enjoying myself. Like, I'm having a nice time. It seems to work for me, yeah? What was it that made you go, I'm not doing this anymore. I don't want to do it. I think part of it when I realised I couldn't do the same things I used to be able to do. Yeah, that was that was Did, an issue. Could you could you physically feel yeah. that? Yeah, like in, in and around the box finishing, not yeah. a problem. Could do that now. It's not a problem. But it was getting to that point. Do you know what I mean? Having to make the runs in behind yeah. to do all the movements you have to do to get yourself in that position. And then it's almost like when pre-season you've got guys that like can't even control the ball properly. Not great footballers. Yeah, are just flying past me in training. Yeah. and that's when I said, you know what? Enough's enough. I'm not really? hanging. I'm not hanging on for the sake of for. A, what, to get just keep getting paid. I said no, no way. My my pride was taking a batter in every single day. <laughs> yeah, so I went. You know what? Enough's enough. So I just went. You know what? No. A lot of players say this about pre-season. When you get older, you know, pre-season seems to be the thing that makes everybody yeah. go. I'm not doing this anymore. No. I'm not doing it anymore. Like I didn't mind the hard work, but it was just a case of, like my brain's telling me when the ball's at my feet, I could do it. It's not a problem. But it was just trying to get about the pitch, and these youngsters are just flying, ping, 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 <laughs> and it was like, no, enough. It's enough. Miles on the clock though, as well, isn't it? It's you've, yeah. you've you've done it for many, many years, haven't you? It's just one of them ways. It is hard. I think that's the hardest thing for any athlete to kind of realize yeah, when you yeah. when you realize you're not the same as you once were. It's tough. But do you think it was the right decision at the right time? Yeah, because yeah. I think obviously I've gone on to do the media side of things. Yeah. Who knows what would have happened after? If I'd have waited and carried on hanging on, hanging on, yeah, and then eventually yeah, yeah. came out, I maybe maybe I've never got the opportunities I've got now. Yeah. But the fact I felt I like come at the right time because now it almost feels like the media side of things is the most fashionable thing on the yeah, planet. Yeah. Well, mate, you slipped into it like an absolute dream as yeah. well. But you when are. Did you? When did you start planning post football? Did you uh, plan? What, did you plan? What age? It was, and I guess Derby. I've got a lot to. I've got a lot of Derby to thank thank them for because. They, he, at the time, obviously, watches why the club's probably in the state that's in, yeah. unfortunately. He started this thing called Rams TV, yeah. where he, he he did try to take on Sky, Mel Morris, yeah. but they were doing like stuff on the Friday, pre-shows about the games. Right. They had, obviously, studio guests before the games. So I started doing a lot of that kind of stuff, yeah. like in the studio, talking about the games. So that helped me. I was doing a little bit of Sky, and then, obviously, people saw me on Sky, and that led to one thing or another. So although I didn't come out and say, I'm going to do the media when I retire, I just kind of fell into it. Yeah, like I tried yeah, the yeah. coaching. Wasn't me, and I, I know it's not me. What, why? Why wasn't it you? <laughs> Just like I liked it when I was there, on the training pitch, helping the kids out, training the coach and the kids. But the moment I left the training ground, it was like okay, out of sight, out of mind. Really, yeah. Whereas when I do the media side of things, I'm constantly thinking about what I can say, yeah. what I can watching do, watching stuff, what, watching gives stuff you, gives you interest that you have to watch. Stuff. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah. it's different. So it was almost like I think to be a good coach. You've got to live and breathe. Like as footballers, yeah. you've got to live and breathe it. And I wasn't doing that with a coach. Well, so. you've just done it for 20 years as well. You yeah. know what I mean? You've just played football for 20 years. Like, probably longer for you. Like, you did you go for the youth setup and all that yeah. kind of So you were even longer where you do it for 20 years and at the end of 20, you think, oh, I don't know if I want to go and do coaching where it's even longer hours than what I have been doing. Yeah. Still the most unsociable, like, weekends, don't even think about it. Like, it's, I don't know if I want that, to be honest with you. Not I really don't. You're not getting yeah. the same money either, are you, as well? Yeah, exactly. Much less money in and out as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're talking about the media. So, obviously, we, we I love you on TalkSport, mate. I do. You and <laughs> yeah, you same. and Goldstein on, on Drive, friggin' incredible on TalkSport. Absolutely buzz off you. Um, what is it like working with these guys? Because these are, like, people at the top of their game at the minute. So, mm. I'm going to throw some names at you here, right? And just tell me what you think of them, all right? Or anything. <laughs> Good, just, obviously. You know what I mean? <laughs> Laura Woods. Let's start with Laura Woods. Absolute legend. Yeah, she's brilliant, Woodsy. Um, it's funny, because when I first started working at TalkSport in the old building... One of my first shows was with Woodsy. Yeah. And then they gave me and Woodsy a show on a Saturday night um, called The, the uh, Phone-In. Yeah, It's called yeah. The Full-Time Phone-In on a Saturday night. It was 7 till 9.30. So we, we did that for a season together. Were you talking all the fans and all that Th- kind yeah, of stuff? Like yeah, it, yeah. It, was, it was good. Right? We, we really enjoyed it. But of course, she's gone from strength to strength. Yeah, After yeah. that, they said to her, listen, we want you to do the breakfast show, which is a big gig. Yeah. But she's, I mean, she's top quality to work with. Yeah. Easy to talk to. Yeah doesn't try and hog the limelight because that's a big thing with presenters sometimes yeah. it, they want their voice to be always heard always heard she's not like that she'll allow you to talk give her a point of view but yeah one of the best in the business for yeah, sure yeah she's game changing for women I love it oh, massively she's knocking it's, down doors for it's fun it's incredible I love it um, who've we got Alan Brazil 
do you know what? I've not really worked with Al that much, but great guy. He's yeah. a stalwart talk sport only 20 yeah, years yeah, you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. Funny. One of the originals, mate. He one started originals, it basically, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. One of the originals. Great guy. Has got a cult following. Yeah. Yeah. So when he's not when he's yeah. on the radio, people don't like it. Yeah. So even the, the decision to, to give Woodsy the three days, him the two. At first, it went down was like it a little really? bit. Yeah, because controversial, yeah. People just love listening. Not yeah. because he's... It's like Hawksby and Jacobs, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Which is why they've had the same slot for 20 years now. People like routine, though, don't they, mate? And people I, like routine. I think it's not even so much his football in Norwich, knowledge, Brazil's. It's because of him as a person. Yeah. Makes mistakes for fun. Yeah, he loves it, But though. that's what you want to hear, didn't you? Yeah. you, you people love it. So, yeah, he's a legend of It's his anecdotes, isn't it? I'll tell you what I want. Well, one of my bucket list things is to go to Cheltenham Races with Alan Brazil. Oh, yeah, that'd be that class. would be. It's legendary. Phew, I Incredible. don't think you could last five days. He I did don't... all five days this year, you know. <laughs> he was yeah. an animal, isn't he? All five, uh, sorry, all four days. Um, who have we got? Al uh, sorry, Ali McCoist. Legend again. Yeah. Really good guy, Ali. Um, probably the most likeable person when it comes really, to... Really, yeah. Yeah, people love him on co-coms. They love him on, on Talksport Breakfast. Just one of them guys. Is, I don't know, And I don't know how he does it because to get up at 6am as much as he does is difficult. Yeah. But whenever he comes on a full of life, full of beans. Yeah. And that helps me sometimes because sometimes you go on, you know what it's like, you might be a bit tired, you might have had a late night the night before and you go and you need someone to pick you up. Yeah. He's that one who can I just pick you that. up. Yeah, he can pick you up and put you in a good place. Yeah, he's another one of them legends. I think he's my favourite commentator at the minute. I could listen to Same him all day long. He's yeah, incredible, isn't he? I'm with you. He is incredible. He just says it like, he just says it how it should be said. Like yeah. dead easy to understand, all that kind of stuff. Top class. Um, Goldstein. Legend. Like, <laughs> one, one of my favourites. Um, I mean, I hate, I hate giving him any kind of credit. Yeah. Because he's, uh, but talk about somebody that, when you talk about an unbelievable broadcaster, he can take anything and change it into anything. Really? And when I say that, all it takes is someone to walk in the room and, and drop a coffee or spill something on the desk. He'll make a topic out of that and he'll yeah. just go, ah, oh, What's the funniest thing someone spilt on a desk and yeah, people yeah, just yeah, love yeah. him and people just thinks on his feet. Speak, thinks on his feet, but because he's he's almost like one of the people. He says he says issues that everyone goes through. Do you know what I mean? Like everyone would <laughs> relatable, go relatable. Yeah. So I mean, he's one of them that you'd have to say. He's I can, been doing it a long time. A as long well, time as well. But how old is he? How old is Goldstein? Forty. Six yeah, seven. He was yeah. like, he was around to be he fair. Was like to and everything. Yeah, he's yeah. the Barnett's world class. Yeah, yeah. It is, yeah. But yeah, sports bar was his thing. But moving him to drive is a master stroke because yeah. more people hear him. But I love he it. I, 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 I listen to drive. Bar, I, I listen to drive. I listen to drive yeah. all the time with you two because yeah. your your chemistry together, mate. He's world a class. He's a genius. I miss him on sports bar. See, and I think I think numbers every night. Yeah, to it every night. Yeah, Simon Jordan. Brilliant. Yeah, and when you say brilliant completely different to Goldstein. Goldstein's brilliant in his own right, Woodsy. But when you're talking about matters around business in football, agents, uh, managers, the hiring process, buying a football club, he is, there's no one better to speak yeah. to. And the way he puts it as well, he uses certain words, you go, I don't know what that means. <laughs> but he's just so clever in the way yeah. that he, he knows exactly what's going on. That I, if I've got, if I'm unsure about anything, to, off the pitch, you listen to Jordan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's to. a go-to, isn't he? He's a go-to. Yeah. He could work for any broadcaster I, he wanted on the planet. I think, right, I think I could go into an argument with, with Simon Jordan and I know I'm right, yeah, I know it. I know I'm right. And I've can, got facts <laughs> and figures in front of me, right? And I know I'm right. He would still make me feel at the end of this argument that I am wrong and I would be agreeing with every word he said. Yeah. He is that good, isn't he? Sounds familiar, that does. <laughs> 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 Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Got one of them at home. I know, yeah. Um, all right then, mate. Let's go for some quick fire questions, okay? What is your guilty pleasure? Do you have something that people might not know about you that you might like or watch or blah, blah, Genre blah? Genre music or... Anything. Is there anything that you're like, oh, that's a bit weird and quirky, but I'm, I'm, I'm owning it? Um, sitting in the loft with his trainers that's nice that's nice yeah, that's <laughs> that's probably when you talk about genre music listen I love hip hop I love rap R&B but I really like the Bee Gees yeah yeah oh, nice. a lot of people know that but yeah there you go the perfect Bee Gees. answer yeah. guilty pleasure yeah, the like Bee Gees that. yeah I like the Bee Gees yeah, yeah. a bit of oh. Bee Gees here and there alright boom um, your favourite cheat meal favourite cheat meal has got to be Five Guys Burgers. Oh, oh, yeah. This one here. I've seen it. That one I've seen, yeah. <laughs> five, seen five, it. Five Guys incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've only had it once and pff, one of the best burgers. You've I've only had it once? Yeah, only had it once. Yeah. There's not, in Lem where are we from? Lempton. The, the nearest one's Birmingham. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. So you got to go all the way there to get one. So, yeah. But I'm with you, mate. Absolutely. Five Guys. Um, your idol growing up? Ian Wright. Yeah, but we've done a pod with him. He is incredible. Yeah, Ian Wright's the. 
he's the reason why I wanted to play football. Yeah. Incredible Arsenal fan. He's the one I'm, reason why I'm an Arsenal yeah, fan. Yeah. I've had the pleasure of working with him quite a few times on Premier League. But you talk about an icon, fantastic yeah. footballer. But yeah, he is my absolute hero. What a human being as well. I was a Palace fan. And, oh, the, really, and when yeah. he moved across to Arsenal, that's when I went to Arsenal and I've been Arsenal ever since. Did not know that. There you go. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, is there anything on your bucket list that you still haven't done? Not in football, like afterwards. This is something that you really want to do. Go to the Super Bowl. Yeah, that'd be cool. Big, big NFL fan. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, big NFL fan, yeah. But um, for whatever reason, TalkSport always send a, a crew to the Super Bowl. And never, never, never get the nod. Never on the nod. But I'm making sure this next one, I'm going to be on that list. Yeah. I reckon we're going to do it, you know? Yeah. Hmm. yeah. We do a little little bit of work with them. And um, we, we said, like, um, post-football, we want to do big sporting events. Yeah, NFL, Super Bowl. NFL, Masters. Yeah. And, and kind of go and document it. Nothing's bigger than the Super Bowl. So. Yeah, Super Bowl. Yeah. Lovely. Um, go to karaoke song. Luther Vandross, never too much. <laughs> never too much, never yeah, too much, there you never go. too much. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Um, if you weren't a footballer, what would you have been? Well, I was quite big on the old af- the athletic scene. Like yeah. I used to do long jump for England, yeah. Did you? Yeah, for to, England? Yeah, I went to English schools, yeah, and did all that. So it probably would have been going down that route. Athletics, what yeah. kind of thing? Decent, mate. Uh, Favourite holiday destination? Los Angeles. Yeah, okay. Biggest advice for your teenage self? Uh, oh, this is the bit deep question. We yeah. normally save this for last. You've jumped have in I, there. With have this. I nipped yeah. in there? Have You've I nipped in there? Yeah, you don't like that one. The, the teenage <laughs> me, but even though even though I was dedicated to football, I really was dedicated. I'd probably be even more dedicated. Really, and I'm talking really? about diet wise because back then you didn't really you didn't really know too much. You knew what yeah. you could and can't eat, but when you're 16, you just think ah, oh, the weight will always be, will always fall off. Yeah, yeah. So even though I was dedicated, I'd probably be even more dedicated, yeah. do you know what I mean? To the fully class. commit, give fully, it everything. Fully, even though I feel like I did, yeah. when you look back now, you still go, oh, maybe yeah. I could have been a bit better there. Yeah, okay, nice, I like that. Um, biggest phobia, do you have any phobias? I don't like spiders. Yeah. Most people say it's all, if I have snakes. Mm. I also have a pet snake, so does, snakes don't bother me. Did you? Yeah. Why do you have a pet snake? Because I was bored. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, when I was at Charlton, I had a pet snake. I bought a pet snake because I was bored. Oh, so you were an adult you had a pet I, snake? I was an adult, yeah, adult, yeah. Charlton, yeah, I bought a pet snake. What kind? It was called a Corolla snake. Or a big orange thing. Nah, I don't like them, mate. I can't. No. <laughs> Do you know what I don't like about snakes? Do you know what it is? Snakes don't have that part of the brain where they can like love something or like something. They they haven't got that in their brain. I don't know what it's called, but they aren't capable of loving something. Do you know what I mean? What, so they just attack? Yeah, so they constantly, like, they can tolerate. Yeah. Like, like the maximum they can do is tolerate something, but they can't, like, <laughs> they can't love something. Yeah. And that, that boggles my head. Like, I want a dog to, like, absolutely see me and buzz off me and stuff. Nah, snakes, no chance of me. That's a good way of putting it. Tolerate. They yeah. can tolerate max, that's it. <laughs> um, right, any superstitions? Um, superstitions, do you know what? I haven't. No. No, I'm trying to think. I, I guess when I was playing, certainly at Sunderland, and the ball was flying in the back of the net every other second, I had to, I listened to the same playlist and I had to listen to the same song at the same point of the yeah, journey. Yeah, yeah, oh, really? yeah. Okay, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so yeah. It, obviously, I was in a form of my life. So I thought, you, always, you know what it's like. Yeah. You always look for that one thing that it must be I did that, so I've got to do it again. And then... So I've got to do it again. So I kept doing it all season. Yeah. So That's when I hit definitely this, a superstition, you know that, yeah. when I hit that. When I hit this bridge, this song better be on by yeah, the time I get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, best moment in your whole football career? It's probably behind you on the screen there, representing your country. Yeah, debut. Debut, yeah. I think Scoring we, first goal? Yeah, but I think making your actual debut, because yeah. you, you almost feel like... Sc- scoring my first goal made me feel like I deserved to be at that level. Yeah. But being in the squad was just like, wow. Like yeah. when, I, when I look at the... I've got a picture of the first squad that I was in. When you look at some of the superstars, yeah. to be standing alongside them when I'm playing for Charlton and these guys are at the biggest clubs in the world, mm-hmm. that's when I thought to myself, hmm, you've done all right here. Yeah, that's a nice way of putting it, that. When you're playing for someone like Charlton and then you're in with the big boys, you're with England, like that's, yeah, that's yeah. a proud moment, that, isn't it? Yeah, I like Massive. it. Um, and then we turn it on its head and say, lo- <laughs> lowest moment in your career. Oh, the lowest would have probably been. Do you know what the lowest? And this is going to sound strange because a lot of people would probably go back to the red nap comment, but probably the lowest point was when I fell out with Paul Lambert at Villa. I should have done more to not let him just kind of push me aside yeah, and, then, yeah, yeah. and then it kind of just fizzle out. Probably that's the one. Just fight a bit more. Fight a bit more. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, Even because, yeah. but you know, it's like you're stubborn. You're annoyed with the manager. I should have just gone. You know what? It's not about him now. It's about myself. Yeah. And even if he doesn't want to pick me, I'm still going to do everything I can yeah. to make sure that 
I'm still up for the fight. It's so hard, to do that, it. though, isn't it? It is it's hard. hard. And that's the one thing I wish I'd have done. Yeah, that's nice. Good answer. What about your um, hardest defender you played against? Hard, hardest and best? Hardest would have been a guy called, I think his name is Chris Morgan. Yeah, that's oh, United. 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 Yeah. yeah, horrible. Big, yeah. big blockhead. Like, like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Back then, where he was made of granite. Like, he yeah, was the, like the, a caveman. Ca- yeah, yeah, horrible. Yeah. Sloths <laughs> in your back. And yeah. he was a, the horriblest. He looked nasty, didn't he? He was nasty. Yeah. Yeah, he was yeah, nasty. He was. The best would be, from a domestic point of view, would be probably Rio Ferdinand. Yeah. Beautiful. Incredible, wasn't he? Elegant. Lovely. Just lovely. Didn't help you out, though, in that Man City 4 3, though. He was no, trying to scoop. Did, did, do you know favours? Did me no favours yeah. whatsoever. And he was world class at flinging yeah, his yeah, arms yeah, off yeah. as well, saying it's not my fault. Is that dickhead there? <laughs> world class at doing <laughs> that. You took the heat off him now. You, you, you <laughs> uh, best goal you've scored, Bentley. We're nearly there, by the way. You're killing it. For best goal I've ever scored would be. Probably a volley when I was at Derby against Wolves. Dropped over my shoulder. I think I remember it, yeah. And I, I think it. I've seen it, yeah. Yeah, on Sky, yeah, volley. Wow, t- right towards the end of your career, yeah. Right towards the end, yeah. Wow. Before that, I was tapping merchant. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, mate. 100 Premier League goals, <laughs> says, says otherwise. Um, the most hostile ground you've played at? Oh, Mill Walls, yeah, by some distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it doesn't even matter if it's not full. It, they can still make it as hostile. Yeah. And to the point where I can remember being going there for Aston Villa in a cup game midweek. We went 1-0 no up and then we got beat because certain players on our pitch just crumbled. Folded. Because there was, there was flares going off. The linesman got hit with like a, a flare. Wow. He went down there to change. No one wanted to go over there to take a throw on. And in the end, they just bullied us. Really? The, uh, obviously, the, the team, Millwall team, fed off the crowd. Couldn't get anywhere near him. Got yeah, beat 2-1. Wow. Mate, it's, people don't realise that it's a thing. It yeah, is. Honestly, it's a, it's go a natural there, thing. And it was a night game as well. So they'd oh, be drinking all day. Mate. So you can imagine. Yeah, mate. It's an FA Cup match as well. It's like a big, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. that. It's like Wembley. Yeah. yeah it's yeah, a yeah. big old day Horrible. Out. Yeah. Here's one good one. Uh, I think I know you're going to say, but funniest teammate, Joker. Uh, funniest teammate throughout my career would probably be. Jonathan Woodgate was funny. Yeah. Yeah, he was a funny character. Really, really good guy. Uh, always cracking jokes. Um, and to be fair, he helped me because of his personality. He helped me in my time at Spurs, yeah. where I was finding it difficult. He was, yeah, he was brilliant. He Everyone helped me. He's a good lad, to me. Yeah, fair. he's top man. Yeah. Um, Can right. I just ask about David Bentley? I've heard some. He good, yeah, good he, stories there. He was funny, but he was when I played with Bents at Spurs. He was kind of a weird one because he was going for a real kind of transition where he would just okay. come from Blackburn, was flying at Blackburn. Couldn't really get it together at Spurs. Just yeah. didn't. I mean, you a lot of money the, as well. A lot of money. You see yeah. the magic he did against Arsenal on the volley, but he still, it just couldn't get any consistency. Yeah. And I think it started to wane on him a little bit. Okay. And it just in the end, it just kind of a strange guy towards the end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, had, I was with him at Blues for a little bit, and I, you know, I loved him to bits. He's a funny guy, like, but he's loose. <laughs> yeah, he was loose. <laughs> Double loose. Yeah, 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 loose. <laughs> Double loose. Um, but I did. I really liked him. Um, in the current game right now, right, you've got to pick one midfielder to be in your team to set you up for the goals, and then you've got to pick another striker to play alongside. Who are you Good picking? Question. Midfielder, Kevin De Bruyne. Yeah. Yeah, he's the yeah. one. He just, do you know what I mean? He just, I mean, I, I, listen, I played with one who was incredible in Luka Modric. Yeah. yeah who was yeah. incredible. But if you talk about assists, De Bruyne is the one, and he just looks like half a yard. Different, quality, different, different level. Yeah. Makes passes that aren't there. Yeah, he, exactly. He, he kicks it different. He slaps yeah. it different. He's different. Do you know what he does? He puts it into an area where centre forward should be. Yeah. And that for me is perfect. He's not looking for me if he makes a run. He's putting it into that area and basically saying to me, Go if you're not there, it's your fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. De Bruyne would be the midfielder. The centre forward to play alongside in the, the current climate, Harry Kane probably. Yeah. Yeah. Because not only does he drop into that number 10 spot, so I could play it high. Do you know what I mean? We could kind of feed off each yeah, other. Yeah, but he's, yeah. Not only his goals, his passing attributes, his technique. Work rate. Work rate. Right, I yeah. think Kane. I love it. Bentley, that was absolutely world class, mate. Yeah. Thank Enjoyed you. Enjoy it, very mate. Much. Thanks for having me on the Foscast. I liked it. I'm really much. sorry for the thumbnail, mate. We'll change it. <laughs> yeah. We'll change it. We'll use a different one for the thing. We'll um, okay, Bentley, um, really appreciate that, mate. Absolutely buzzing. Um, as always, we finish every podcast. We look into this camera here and we say, Up the Foscast. Up the Foscast. Up the Foscast. Yes, Ben. Brilliant. Well, Thank well you, done, mate. mate. Cheers, guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks everybody for watching. We hope you enjoyed the latest episode of the Foscast. Don't forget to give us a follow on Spotify. Up the Foscast. <laughs>